Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company. I'm looking at some of the guns that they're selling in an upcoming April of 2016 Premier Auction. And as you can probably see, we have quite the selection of developmental Walther P38 pistols here. Uh, actually, none of these is technically a P38. These are all models that preceded it. And these were all in a collection of one very enthusiastic Walther collector. And I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to do a video discussing the developmental history of the P38, where it came from and the other ideas that Walther was tinkering with. So this whole series started in the early 1930s, probably about 1932. And of course, by 1938, the P38 was adopted by the German military. So it's actually a fairly short developmental time frame. We're only talking about six years, more or less. So why don't we go ahead and uh, bring the camera right in and let's get a close up look. We're pretty much going to start from here and work our way around to the final developed adopted version. So our story really begins when Walther releases the Walther model of PP, the, the police pistol. This was, became a very popular gun for Walther. It was a simple straight blowback, uh, double action. In fact, one of the very first really commercially successful double action pistols. Uh, had a single single stack magazine uh, and chambered for the 32 or 765 millimeter Browning cartridge. Uh, very popular and Walther decided that they wanted to see what they could do about getting military contracts for these. Now the German military was looking to replace the Luger with something a bit less expensive uh, and they had been kind of for some time. There was a lot of everybody who, who used the Luger typically liked it but was concerned about how expensive it was to manufacture. So. Walther took this and scaled it up. The result was the model of MP slash PP, the military version of the police pistol. This is chambered for the 9mm Parabellum cartridge, but it is still a simple blowback pistol. You'll see all the features are pretty much taken right from the earlier gun. We have this exposed uh, hollowed out ring hammer. It is a double action pistol. You can cock and fire single action if you prefer. The magazine release button is located on the, the side of the grip frame and this gave us a, uh, a nine round capacity, nine millimeter parabellum pistol. Seems really great, uh, except that it didn't really work well. Uh, the problem was simple blowback is really uh, not really an ideal mechanism for a, a pistol cartridge that is as, as hot as nine millimeter parabellum. So the next gun that Walther comes up with is another model of MP. Both this and the previous one were technically referred to as the MP or military pistol model. However, this clearly is a totally different mechanism. And this is the genesis really of the P38. However, there are a lot of differences between this and the final P38, despite the fact that they look externally quite similar. So the biggest obvious visual difference is that this has a shrouded hammer instead of an exposed hammer. But then when you start looking closer, you'll see other differences. For example, we've got these two reinforcing ribs on the side of the frame or the slide right here on both sides. So one other major difference that you will see here is that there's no bridge over the slide. When you pull this back, you can see the, the barrel sitting here by itself and the slide rails come forward. And the thought was that they're, they're captive enough that this should work fine. Ultimately, what they found in testing was that the slide tended to jump off of its rails when you were firing, and obviously that's not a good thing. Let me go ahead and lock this open there. You can see that we have our locking lug up in the front. We actually have two of them separately, one on each side. This uh, system would change substantially uh, by the end of P38 development, but this was their very first version. So we've got the reinforced slide. We've got no bridge up here. You'll see that the takedown lever, this is both a, a slide stop and a takedown lever, and it's one long lever here. The safety stays the same, but you know, other than that, really the small details on this pistol uh, are quite different from the final version. Now, if we take a close up look at the side of the slide, these can be identified as the model MP right here in 9mm. You can see this is serial number 1002. This is the only known surviving example of this model of the pistol. They probably made a handful of them and they started at serial number 1000. One last detail to look at since we've got the slide open is the extractor on the top of the slide. 
this top cover is the extractor. So there isn't any separate piece. That would also change substantially as development uh, evolved. Oh, and one last, last thing. Uh, this is, these were cut for a shoulder stock. There's this T slot in the back, although I don't believe any of the stocks survive. But that was an idea at this point early in development. So the problems with the MP were addressed in further development. And the next pistol that Walther uh, designed, or their next modification, was the Army pistol. Now this is always, whenever these are found, all of the examples are marked Army pistol, caliber 9mm, and of course, Walther's information. However, you'll often see them referred to by collectors as the model of AP, simply following the, the naming custom of the MP. So, the AP, we see a lot of changes uh, already that, that will stay the same as the final development. So, the slide stop and the takedown lever have been um, split up into two separate pieces, and these two will stay the same through the rest of production. We now have a bridge over the slide, so this holds the front of the slide rails together, which prevents it from jumping off its track. That's a, a major development of this pistol. Now we can also see that this locking block has been replaced with one piece that pivots all the way through the slide. You can really clearly see the difference here between the original MP locking block up here and the AP locking block on the bottom. So the AP is in many ways mechanically uh, the P38, but there were still some little changes that had to be made. One of those changes was the hammer. So, so far these prototypes all have shrouded hammers and we don't know exactly why Walther was working with those. It's possible that simply Walther thought that was the better option. It may be that they thought the military would prefer a shrouded hammer given that the Luger did not have an exposed hammer or there may be some other reason that I just haven't heard about or thought of. But um, the shrouded hammer would eventually fall by the wayside. Now there's one other model of the AP, the Army pistol, that I do want to show you. And remember, very few of these guns were made. This particular one is serial number 44. Uh, and all of them, th these aren't mass production guns. These are all basically extended prototypes. So they'll all have some slight differences, whether it's the profile of the barrel, the exact checkering on the stocks, little small details changed. One of the big details that changed on one of these guns was the addition of a shoulder stock and a much longer barrel. So this is an example of an AP that was made obviously for longer range shooting. The barrel's been extended, which means that the sight radius is extended, and it has been fitted with a shoulder stock slot. This is actually a pretty clever shoulder stock mechanism, as shoulder stock mechanisms for pistols go. There are two small rails cut into the very back of the frame, and then one round profile cut right here. The stock now has two matching rails right up here, and it's got this locking lever which is round. So what you do is put it to the attachment side where it's cut out, slide this onto the back of the pistol, and when you rotate that lever, it locks the stock in place. And it's actually a pretty solid lockup. There. Slide that on, lock it in place. You've got just a tiny bit of wobble. Uh, stocked pistols always seem to have a little bit of wobble to them. There you have your long range shoulder stocked variant of the Walther Army pistol. And as with many other of these such shoulder stocks for pistols, the stock also acts as a holster for the gun. It slides down in there and there we go, it snaps into place. So. Using this, you can hang this on your belt, carry your pistol around, draw the pistol if you just need a pistol, or if you want something to make a, a longer shot, well, you can attach the stock and you have yourself sort of a mini carbine. Now the, the stock here also contains a spare magazine and a disassembly tool. All right, so at this point we're talking mid-1930s, roughly probably 1935 for this. And then we are going to see a return in a somewhat confusing manner. We're going to see a return to the MP designation. So we had our very first MP pistols here. No bridge, 
rails on the side of the slide, reinforcing rails. And then we have our second MP, which is much more closely associated with the P38, the final P38. Now there were versions of this second model of MP, both with a shrouded and with an uh, external hammer. And this is the first time where we see the external hammer showing up in this development process. So now we're talking like 1936, Walther experiments with a number of these. They actually offer them in a couple different calibers. This is in uh, nine millimeter parabellum. They did also make a few in 45 ACP, for example. And the big difference here is they've now, they're, they're continuing to simplify and improve the design and they no longer have a reinforcing rib on the side of the slide. So the previous uh, army pistol still has one rib on it here and on this side. With the second pattern of MP, those are gone. And we now have the distinctive flat-sided slide of the P38. If we look at the locking mechanisms, you can see that they're pretty much the same. This, this part of the design has been pretty well finalized now. What they're doing is strengthening it to simplify it, make production a little more economical. So from the second model of MP, it's a very short hop to the HP, the HP or Harris Pistol, which is the first commercially and militarily available and adopted version of this pistol. So these were adopted by Sweden, for example, and it's this version of the pistol that was tested by the German military and formally adopted by it. There are only a few differences left at this point that have to be changed. We have gone from a round hammer to a spur hammer. The MP had its extractor kind of hidden under the slide where you can't really see it. On the HP, now it's visible on the outside. Um, this is almost certainly there to make it a little more accessible and easier to swap out and assemble. And then some little things like the profile of the takedown lever changes. But mechanically, once we get to the HP, we have the final military and mass-produced version of the P-38. It's of course adopted by the German military in P-38 and uh, in 1938. And that is pretty much the end of the story. Uh, until after World War II when they go on to make some more changes with the, the P1 and then other developments after the war. All right, before we finish, there's one more pistol that we need to talk about. And that is this very unusual, literally one of a kind, sheet metal Walther prototype. Now there, over time there have been a lot of different theories about this gun, but I think by taking a close look at it we can pretty well determine what it is. And it would appear to be a very, very early Walther prototype where they used the sheet metal as a simpler method of manufacture to kind of prove out some concepts at the very beginning of this development process. So the reason that I say this, instead of it being, for example, a last ditch late war experiment, is just based on the features. For example, if we look up at the top here, you'll see that the top cover is the extractor. So the very first of this series, the very first model of MP, had the slide top cover acting as the extractor. So why would they go to that later after, and in fact it's the very next step, by the time we get to the AP, still has a reinforcing rib here, but we now have a separate extractor down here on the slide. So this seems to be a feature from the very early stages of production. And then if we look at the lockup, this has two locking lugs that are actually uh, pivoting horizontally instead of vertically. This is totally different from the locking mechanism on any of the other P38 models. And to me, that suggests that this was done right at the very beginning. They discovered that this method wasn't all that effective or reliable or economical or something. And so they abandoned this and they went to the lockup system on the very first MPs and then they continued to tweak that system to the, the final variation used in the P38. You'll notice that there is no disassembly lever on this pistol. We have a slide stop as a one piece thing here, but we don't have a disassembly lever to work with. So this pistol has no serial number, which would suggest that it was never really meant to leave the factory. It wasn't part of production, it was literally a, a one-off handmade experiment just to, as a proof of concept, really. Oh, this is the only one of this type of pistol known to exist. 
and I think we can pretty, uh, pretty reasonably say that this would have been at the very beginning of production. It even has its own magazine, which is rather a bit different from the standard P38. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, I thought this was way too good of an opportunity to pass up to take a look through the whole development of the P38. So if you're interested in the P38, hopefully you learned something about where they came from. And of course, all of these pistols are coming up for sale. So if you have a substantial P38 collection or you'd like to start one, this would be a great time to add to it. Uh, if you take a look at the description text below, you will find links to all of these individual guns. Uh, through their Rock Island catalog pages. You can take a look at the descriptions and the provenance for each one. And uh, if you're interested in a bunch of these, I'd say you ought to just come up here to the auction house in person and participate, but you can also always place bids through their website. Thanks for watching.